so much, Kwesi, for leading us well this morning. And it's a privilege to be here this morning. And uh, as you have said, God is so good that we are together this morning physically. And it has been, as my brother Richard said, an answered prayer. So let us praise God for this. So before we start with the word of God, first of all, I just wanted to convey my special thanks to everyone who uh, made it possible for us to meet virtually, online, because there was so much hard work which went into preparations of those online services. So I would like to, I won't be able to say all the names, but um, the media team that worked tirelessly, um, also the, the worship team that also was working every uh, weekend to make sure that our services are possible. And also I would like to thank um, the, the, the teams that we are supporting God's tribe. There is a number of churches that were with us because um, in March when people had to leave, we had to convene a small team that could make this possible. And uh, it was not easy when you are told to lead the team uh, when, as you know, Sheshi is not around, Jeremy is not around, all other people who were helping us were not around, and God has been so faithful to allow talents, to allow uh, commitments from the people within the church and outside the church to be a blessing to his body. So I would like to thank the uh, elders from um, one tribe in Kenya, from God's Face in South Africa, and also from the larger advanced team who had weekly calls with us to support us, to guide us, to listen to us, to make decisions with us until today we are start meeting again. So, so that has been um, has been very wonderful, but also local churches here in Dar es Salaam, Liberty, um, also the Ocean, um, also in Dar es Salaam, we are also always there when uh, we needed support, but also just to offer their support to us as a church. So uh, God has been so good. So today we are going to continue with the, 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 the series that we are taking through, which is the series of Acts. and. Uh, Today we are in part four of this series. So as you know that Book of Acts is one of the great books in the Bible. And from the Book of Acts, we find that this is one of the foundations of the, the New Testament. As you know, it wouldn't be possible to understand the letters from Apostle Paul if there was no the Book of Acts. You know, the, 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 the Paul's letter forms the larger part of the New Testament. So imagine if you're just reading the letter and you don't know who Paul is. And we get an account of Paul from the time of his conversion to how he managed to take the gospel from Jerusalem to the ends of the world. In that time, we learn all that through the book of Acts. But we see from the book of Acts how the gospel spread, how the church was formed from the first century up to when the church was grown to Africa, to other parts of the world, to Asia, to different parts of the world. All of that we learn through the book of Acts. So it's a wonderful book. I would like to urge you to read it. I would like to urge you to learn it. Reading is not enough because you have to learn it to understand it. You have to listen to uh, different people who took time to explain about this book. It will bless you and it will make you know more about um, the, the, the Bible. So today we are going to continue with this book. Today we are going to cover uh, chapter number two where we will be focusing on the power of the community or the power of fellowship, the pointers of fellowship. We have seen how we work together 
during all this time of COVID, um, social distancing, when we were not uh, physically meeting, but also all this time during preparations of the reopening of our church. It wouldn't have been possible if we were not working together as a team, if we are not working together as a community. So uh, God has blessed us with each other so that everything can be possible when we work together. So I'd like to invite you to pray with me before starting reading the word of God. Let us pray. Father, we thank you this morning. We thank you for bringing us together yet this is another time, Father. We thank you that you are going to teach us today, Father. So this morning, Father, we ask, Father, to touch us with your presence, Father, to touch us with your word, Father, to bless us, Father, with more knowledge of you, Father, but also to remind us how important it is to be in fellowship between one another, Father. We thank you and we welcome you in Jesus' name. Amen. So I'm going to read from Acts chapter 2, from verse 42 to verse 47. The Bible says, And they devoted themselves to the apostles' teachings and the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. And hour came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles, and all who believed were together and had all things in common. And they were selling their possessions and belonging and distributing the proceedings to all as any had need. And day by day attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes, they received their food with glad and generous praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to their number day by day those who were being saved. Praise God. So, we as believers, we belong to a wonderful company. Imagine being a Christian was like being an employee in a company. And the company that we belong, which is the church, would be the company that is a great product. Because companies always have a product that they are known for. And our product, as you know, is the gospel. This is a product that will always sell, that will always be accepted anywhere you go in the world. And actually is what is needed throughout the world. Even you go to any part of the world, whether it's east, whether it's south, whether it's north, whether it's west, still the gospel is needed. Also, as a member of this company, we have a great benefit package. Great benefit package, including the forgiveness of sins, including the hope for our future, including the purpose for our present. And another one thing that you won't find in any other company is retirement package that we have as uh, the body of Christ. That when all this is over, what is waiting for us when we go to heaven is something that no any other ch company can offer you. But before that, we have to live together. Before that, we have to live as a community. Before that, we have to live as a team and God is calling us into fellowship. So, the Bible in the scripture that we've just read is reminding us, is giving us an account of the early church as an example of how they fellowship among one another, how they were able to be together, how they were able to pray together, how they were able to meet together, to share their homes for one another, and as you have seen, God bless them and increase their numbers and miracles and a lot of other things happened because they were able and they were 
fellowshipping together. So today we are going to, to look at how can fellowship be done through loving and caring, through service or ministry, and also through small groups. All these are the things that here at God's tribes are happening. So we are going to remind you a little bit of how these are going to be done. So first of all, let's just ask ourselves, what is fellowship? In verse 42, the Bible said, and they devoted themselves to the apostle teachings and the fellowship. So what is fellowship? So in Greek words, the word for fellowship is koinonia. So the word koinos means in common and also means together. So when we talk of fellowship, we means that people who have a common thing and they are together. So it's more like a family. You have something in common in a family. That's why you find even people who belong to one family here, they are together. I can see husband and wife. I can see children. They are in groups that are together. So we as Christians are also called to be together as a family. So we have seen the early church devoted to one another in fellowship and also uh, we as a church are called to be together. Sometimes we see that when you hear the account of the early church is like it's too good to be true. That it's not easy these days to find the church that is doing the things that the early church were doing. For example, the way I read that they were sitting together, they sell things to help one another, you know, contributing to the group so that when someone has needs, they go to that basket and they remove some of whether it's money, whether it's possession, whether it's needs, sharing homes, sharing transport. And you are like, oh my God, I don't see that in our churches these days. But just to remind you that during this season of COVID, we had a COVID fund and people were generous to come together to contribute so that we help those people who are in need. And people who are in need were encouraged by the leadership to go and meet their needs from those, um, the fund that were availed. Even we as a church contributed to the larger advanced team to help the churches in other parts of the world that we are suffering. So you see that um, there are some resemblance of we as God's tribe also or we as a church with what the L church was doing. We might not meet the exact standard of what they are doing, but still you see the elements that are there. So if today you are looking for church that is exactly the way the, the early church was doing, you might be jumping from one church to another and not find it. But what I want you to remember is that we are all called to fellowship. We are a large body of Christ, and each one of us has a part to play. The body cannot function if cannot perfect, function perfectly if one part of the body is not being utilized or is absent or is not working. If the eyes are not there, that means you will function, you will walk, but you won't be able to see. If the arms are not there, that means you will be able to walk, you will be able to see, but you won't be able to grab things. So imagine you are part of this uh, body of Christ and you are not participating in any way. Today I want to call you to be, um, to be anchored into fellowship with other members of this church so that we have the body that is complete. Charles Spurgeon said, I'm going to quote, Some Christians try to go to heaven alone in solitude. But believers are not compared to bears or lions or other animals that wander alone. Those who belong to Christ are sheep in this respect, that they love to get together, 
Sheep go in flocks, and so do God's people. You remember during the series that we finished not long ago, the I Am series, we saw how um, when we were covering I Am the Shepherd, we saw how sheep were animals who were together, and we as Christians or as believers are called to be like sheep who are being led by a shepherd who have to be together. So you cannot do this on your own. It's like a principle. There are some principles that you cannot change. You can be a good believer. You can speak in tongues. But if you say, I'm jumping from the roof, God is going to save me, you are lying to yourself. There is a principle. There is a law of gravity that operates. That if you jump, you're going to fall and you're going to die. It's similar to this principle of fellowship. You have to fellow with other Christians. You have to fellow with fellow believers in order to be a blessing to others, in order for you also to receive the blessings of others. So I'm going to share three ways on how fellowship should or can occur in church. So, as I said earlier, we are going to look at how fellowship happens through love and care. So, in verse 42, we learn that the early church, the believers were together and they were sharing what they had. That means they were caring and they loved one another. Being together means being together physically. During the time of COVID, we still uh, we are not able to meet physically, but we are still together through our technology and media uh, advances that we have now. I believe even if this was the case during the early church, they would have still met similar ways so that they care for one another. Even though we are not physically, but still through love, we are able to make sure that we care for one another. What uh, my brother Kwesi said that it was a very hard time to receive the news of the diagnosis that our pastor Sheshi has. But through love and care, we were able to pray. We were able to fast as a church. And nobody forced us. Oh, it was not done through obligation. It was done through love and care. We managed to raise over 100 thousand US dollars throughout the world. It's not that we were forced to contribute, but it was through love and care. And that's what the body of Christ is supposed to be. We are supposed to care for one another. We are supposed to love one another. There are people who call themselves Christians, but they don't they have no place in the church. They spend time following some of the good online sermons, online pastors, and still believe that it's the same as coming to church because the message is also from the Bible. Maybe they're even much blessed with those messages in terms of good to hear, in terms of good to follow. But God has called us to be together as people. He's called us to fellowship among one another. In the book of Hebrews, chapter 10, from verse 24, the Bible says, And let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works, not neglecting to meet together, as it is a habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day droning near. So, Jesus is calling us to love and to care for one another. He's using the church as a vessel for caring for one another. We are all different. We all have different needs. But through coming together is when we can have an opportunity, first of all, to pray for one another but also to share our burdens, also to be blessing to one another. 
because we have different struggles throughout the day. But when you come to church, when you fellowship in small groups, when you fellowship with others through different ministry, when we share life through different ministry, is when we are blessed by sharing those burdens, but also praying for one another. This is not a job for Pastor Sheshi, or this is not the job for a set of elders here at God's tribe, or for a certain people who have been here uh, for many years, like my brother Richard, or some other members who have been here for many years, or a special group of a certain ministry to pray for others or to fellowship and help others. This is a responsibility of us all. And we all can do that. Secondly, fellowship happens through ministry service. That's why um, in verse 46, the Bible said, all who believed were together. Verse 44. In verse 46, the Bible says, and day by day attending the temple together. And you remember, they were listening to apostles' teachings. That means they were listening to the gospel preached to them. And you can hear the Bible say that through those teachings, through the spread of the gospel, God had had their numbers day by day. You remember in um, chapter number one, God added to their number in that service 3,000 people were added to church that day. That means it was a mega church. A lot of people were there. That means when we meet like this, or even when we meet online, it provides an opportunity for others also to join in. You know, we have spectators, we have people who are not believers, but still, God bring them. We learn from the book of, uh, the, 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 the Gospel of John, that it's God who brings you to salvation. So God brings people when we meet like this, when we have service, when we have worship services. And through those meetings is when they hear the word. When we share our testimonies is when they hear the power of the gospel. And that's how they came to salvation. How, that's how they come to belong to this wonderful company that we belong to. Amen? When you read the book of Acts, from chapter number one to chapter number seven, you'll see how the gospel was able to spread through Jerusalem. And when you come from chapter number eight to chapter number 12, you'll see how the gospel went from Jerusalem to Judea and Samaria. And then you go from chapter 14 to chapter 28, you'll see how the gospel spread to by then known the end of the world. And each of all those stages, the author of this book, this book was written by Luke. The author of this book is saying, keep on saying, they were together, they prayed together, they listened to the teaching of the apostle, and their numbers was added day by day. When you go to Samaria, to Judea, the same thing is being said. Day by day, their numbers was added. When you go to the ends of the world, day by day, they meet together and their numbers was added in uh, the church. So you find that service is another way of fellowshipping. So we always have to remember that we need, first of all, to be committed to this service that we have. It can be our Sunday service, it can be different ministries that we have, times of prayers as corporate, but also we have different forums where people come together. Men's prayers, uh, ladies' retreats, meetings, ladies' prayers, all those are forums where we are called to participate at the body of Christ. So I really believe that you'll get to know more people and fellowship here with all these good people that belong to this body of Christ. 
And I believe that we'll all be active in this ministry when we are called to save or the way we are called to save. There is no small work when it comes to service. God needs you. The church needs you. There are so many different ministries that you can be part of. And we all need you to be part of these ministries because that's a blessing that you are going to offer to the body of Christ. God is calling you to be part of the ministry. Number three, fellowship happens through small groups. If your fellowship or your moment in church happens through a large group like this only, then you are missing a lot. You are missing the blessings of the fellowship. Because through these large groups, it's really hard to really know people closely. It's really hard for you to be a blessing to others. It's really hard to sort of share life with people. We share life, yes, through ministry service, but also all these things when we say that we share burdens, we share prayers, we pray for one another, we share meals, we share you know, our struggles usually happens in small groups. That's why God's tribe here, we have what we call life groups. These are the areas where we meet, separate from these larger groups, but at least small number of people, small number of families. It can be five families, it can be ten families, but this is what brings us together. This is where we are blessed to share a lot of things more than what we share here in church as large groups. So, uh, when you go back to verse number 46, you see the Bible says that, and day by day, attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes. That means there was a room in the early church for small groups. All these things that we say, they meet the need of the needy. You might find that most of them were done when they meet at home, where people were sharing life. So we are called also to be part of a small group, to be part of this prayer meeting that we are calling. It's amazing um, how small groups can transform your life. I know Sometimes it's a drug or it's really difficult to attend these prayers, especially when we, we were meeting physically, you know, for us as men, you know, we used to have a men's prayer, and you go to the banda on a Saturday morning, you know, and only four or five people are turning up, and you're like, ah, I wish more guys could come. And then sometimes you find it's like 12 of you, it's like 15 of you, and it's joy. But I wish, I wish... Uh, that we use this opportunity and use these platforms, whether it's online, whether it's physically, to be part of these small groups, to be part of these, um, of these uh, ministries where we can be closer together. We have heard a lot of testimonies when people were meeting in these small groups. People had job interviews, people had exams, people had some conflict in their homes, people had struggles, people lost their loved ones, but when they come to these small groups, when we pray for them, it's when we encourage one another, it's when we, you know, take moments to listen to their struggles, to listen for, uh, to their frustrations, and they're blessed by having brothers and sisters around them. So, I trust and I believe that we will prioritize fellowship and we will also be committed to fellowship, whether it's through small groups, but also through service and also through loving one another and caring uh, for one another. So I'm going to share some practical steps that we can take as individuals when it comes to fellowship. Number one, call someone. 
visit someone or invite someone, especially those you have not seen in a while. For example, today we have met. I know we still observe social distancing. That's why I'm included calling someone so that we can encourage those people, we can bless them, we can pray for them, and we can help them. We have not met for some time. I believe some people lost their jobs. I believe some people um, are struggling in one way or another. So we are called to be a blessing to them. And when we say fellowship, it means it's not something that just happens. We need to take some physical steps. Ask someone, how did they spend these last three, four months? If they had anything that they need to be prayed for. So that's the first step. Not only during this period, but throughout your life. Try to have the attitude of trying to find out what is happening uh, in your fellow Christians or your fellow believers and encourage them. I remember when I started, uh, when I joined God's tribe, just after maybe a month or two, Pastor Sheshi welcomed me and invited me to meet him over a coffee. So I remember one day walking from my office. Actually, I walked just across, uh, used to be across the, uh, one of the plazas here in Bezi Beach. And he was there. And we sit and just talk and just share some stuff just to get to know one another. And it was encouraging and it was really, really nice for him to do that. Number two, send encouraging notes. It can be through WhatsApp. It can be through Facebook, email, text, or anything. It's always good when someone acknowledge you, when someone encourage you, when someone just get in touch with you. During this season, um, what we did, maybe we, we did it in a certain percentage. We, we wanted to do it in a uh, sort of a fully capacity, but we tried to call different members of church, just calling them, just talking to them, see how are they doing. And it was a blessing to a lot of people. People are saying we're really encouraged by receiving these calls, by receiving these communications. Some of them we could not reach them through phone calls, so we texted them, just, just asking how are you doing, you know. So even for us as a body of Christ, for us as a church, or for you individually, sometimes you came to church, you don't see some of the brothers and some of the sisters. So it won't hurt just to send them a message saying how are you. But there are some people who left. I know we have uh, some brothers and sisters who left to go to other places. For example, uh, the Lees are leaving. And they will be very encouraged, maybe three months down the line, one year down the line, to receive a message from a member saying, guys, how are you doing? Can I pray for you? Number three, sign up today for a life group. This has been covered by my brother, Kwesi. But I still want to emphasize that if you're new at God's tribe, if you're not new, but still you are not belonging to any life group, or if you are belonging to a life group and you're not active, I'd like to ask you to commit to a life group. So sign up for a life group and be committed to those life group meetings. You'll be blessed, but also you'll be a blessing to those around you. We are not supposed to be selfish. Sometimes you feel, I don't need them. But maybe they need you. Maybe that blessing that God wants to bless someone is through you. I'm so happy that our life group in Ununio has been meeting throughout this time of COVID. And uh, it was one of the life group that was really poorly. It was struggling to take off, but God has done something which is amazing. And even now that we have started meeting physically, God is still doing some amazing stuff. People are looking forward to uh, Wednesdays to meet together. And that's an encouragement. Number four, attend prayer meetings. Please attend prayer meetings. That's another way to fellowship. We usually have prayer meetings at the Banda. 
Maybe today it's the first day, or maybe during these social distance times might not be possible to do that very closely, but still, I would like to encourage to attend this Sunday morning prayer before service. But also we have other prayer services, men's prayer, women's prayer, you know, group prayers, any kind of prayer that comes, you should look at it as an opportunity for you to be part of it. There's a power in prayer. You might not see it now, but always God answers prayers. The answer can be no for your blessings, but always God answers prayer. So take a moment and always uh, be anchored in prayer. Finally, commit to Jesus. Commit to Jesus means we have to try as much as possible throughout our life as we grow spiritually to walk in steps that Jesus also walked. Our character has to be Christ-like character. And that's such a blessing to the body of Christ. Let us pray. Father, we thank you this morning. We thank you for your word. We thank you for reminding us, Father, that we are not alone, that we are in the body of Christ, that we are in fellowship among believers. We ask you, Father, to continue to touch us so that we can be good members of this body. And today, Father, if there is anyone who came discouraged, there is anyone who came um, lonely, if there is anyone who came with some sadness, Father, we ask you, Father, to touch them, Father. We ask that this word that you have prepared for us today, Father, to encourage them, Father, to lift them up, Father, and also to be a testimony that they are not alone and that you are with them and all of us are with them through you, Father. As we leave this place a little bit later, Father, we ask you, Father, to continue to cover us with your blood, continue to protect us against COVID or any other disease. Continue to bless our families, Father. Continue to protect us and just lift us up, Father. We thank you and we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.